KSI says Tommy Fury will be frightened when he steps in the ring with Jake Paul. But is this really true? And why is KSI suddenly talking about Jake Paul in a positive light? I mean, every K every KSI prediction, bar from the Tyrone Woodley fight, has been wrong about Jake Paul. He predicted that Ben Askren would beat Jake Paul. He predicted Nate Robinson would beat Jake Paul. Uh, he did predict that he would beat Tyrone Woodley, but it's sort of in a strange manner in the sense of he, he knows that every prediction, he knew that every prediction in the past had been wrong. So he was going to bet uh, for Jake Paul hoping that he was wrong again and Tyron Woodley would beat Jake Paul which obviously didn't happen but it's really strange that suddenly now he's saying that Tommy Fury will be terrified on the night. Here is his exact quote. Yeah, I see Tommy losing. You know why? I see him being frightened about himself on the big stage. Now, this is a legitimate concern that people have had. Tommy Fury is yet to have a huge fight. He's only had 17 fights in his total career. His amateur career consisted of 10 fights, whilst his professional career since December of 2018 has consisted of 7. However, in his professional career, all 7 fights have been against pretty poor opponents. Even his most recent fight, which was by far his largest on the Jake Hall undercard, it was difficult to see Tommy struggle against Anthony Taylor, who's a wrestler who's hardly ever touched boxing gloves in his life. You know, like, your neighbor's cat could beat Anthony Taylor, and Tommy Fury, the brother of Tyson, struggled to do it. So, you know, this is a legitimate concern, and also the other thing is the in insane amount of pressure that's been put on Tommy Fury's back. I've covered this so many times now, but, but you have John Fury saying that if, if he loses, he'd be retired from boxing. You have Tyson saying that he'd have to move to a foreign country. He wouldn't be allowed back home. You had Eddie Hearn saying that he should move to the Sahara Desert and never touch boxing gloves again out of shame. Like, this is a hell of a lot of pressure to put on a 22-year-old's back. But for once, I really do disagree with KSI here for a number of reasons. First of all, I think we would have seen a very different reaction from Tommy Fury had he been really scared of Jake Paul and if he was really scared of Jake Paul. You see, ever since Tommy Fury has taken this fight and has had all these bets made as him, you know, you're going to change your name if you lose and etc. You're going to be retired from boxing. He's actually met that challenge very, very well and he has not been silent. Like in that press conference a couple of days ago, he made Jake Paul his son. I mean, he was roasting the guy. Jake Paul was sat there like he was waiting for the school bus whilst Tommy Fury was absolutely blasting at him. Fought a 40 year old guy in your last fight. He hit with one proper punch and he fell through the ropes. And listen, mate, you can't put in the clause about not knocking me out. Because when I come for you, I'm knocking you Spark out. You fought you need tired UFC people, a basketball <laughs> player, and that's it. When you fight me December 18th, mate, you'll get a knock Spark out. Because this is a step too far for you. Sloth with the biggest draw in the world I've ever seen. See you, stick to YouTube because that's all you're good for. Because when it's not rigged and it's not set up in the contract, you lose. And I'm going to show you what losing feels like come December 18th. The question to me when I take this fight, I feel like I've won the lottery. You're asking me to fight absolute nugget on a massive world stage. You're going to pay me very nicely and comfortably. And all I've got to do is fight Jake Paul, a YouTuber. I'm going to splatter this man come December 18th. I've, I've won the lottery, so I'm begging Jake Paul, please do not pull out. Please don't pull out. I, I never, I never athlete. pull out ever. Because normally, Ask my girlfriend. Because normally, when we get to this stage in boxing, you've got to fight for a world title, and you're asking me to fight a YouTuber. Sign me up, please. Don't pull out, please don't. I'm begging you. Split decision win. That means you only just won against a 40 year old retired UFC fighter. My God, well done, good job, mate. You just about beat a 40 year old man. When you get in there with a fresh 22-year-old who's been doing this all his life, you're going to wish you stuck to paying UFC fighters off and basketball players. You should have gone and fought Tiger Woods, not somebody who's done it his whole life because you're in for a big shot, my friend. You are the one who's going to crumble because you know why? When you get hit all about the face and your nose and ears are busted, you're going to be looking at BJ the blowjob Flores and thinking, oh, God, what have I done here? I shouldn't have called him out. Oh, God, pull me out, pull me out. I'm begging you, please don't retire on the stool. Come out and fight like a man because you're getting knocked spark out. I, I, must, I wish it was tomorrow. I'll lay you out right now. It was incredible to see Jake Paul suddenly be put in his place for once at a press conference because he was a completely different person with his older brother Tyson by his side. You know, Tyson is a master trash talker. Uh, you know, he did that to Deontay Wilder countless times leading up to all of their different fights. So with Tyson next to him, Tommy Fury ran rampant over Jake Paul. He was like, literally, you know, it was overruling him at every opportunity. Jake Paul was trying to 
get a word in. He just couldn't. If Tommy Fury really was absolutely terrified out the wazoo of Jake Paul, then I think he would have been silent. He wouldn't be saying anything. He'd be let Jake Paul just go, go over him like he was nothing. You know, he would let Jake Paul be. He would let Jake Paul be his bully, basically. But that hasn't happened, and I think that is insanely telling. I and I I really do think the main component as to why that hasn't happened is his older brother Tyson taking a big role in his camp. You know, Tyson's released multiple Instagram videos of them training together. Tyson is is working with him very very well in England. Tommy no doubt idolizes his older brother Tyson, so it would be very nice for him to get some attention from him, especially uh, having have such investment from him in his fight. You know, I, I I've said this a couple of times now, but Tyson seems to be actually taking more interest in taking uh, all these shots at Jake Paul, you know, all these jabs, uh, than Tommy does. I mean, it is insane how Tyson has suddenly taken such a big role in this. You know, he started calling them Dossers the other day, which, if you know Tyson Fury, is uh, basically the Grim Reaper knocking on your door. So, <laughs> Dosser is, is back. But yeah, I, I think Tyson makes a big difference and gives Tommy a lot more confidence than he'd otherwise have, because Jake Paul kind of is trying to round up all the pressures against Tommy, make it seem like everybody's against him. But with Tyson by his side, I think Tommy feels very invincible and cannot be affected by Jake Paul because you have this such powerful figure of Tyson mentoring you and, and keeping your mental state on the right path, keeping your physical state on the right path. Like, I think Tyson will actually be the game changer in this fight. And I think in this instance, KSI is completely wrong. I don't think... Tommy is going to completely lose it on the night, as long as Tyson keeps trading him and keeps keeps him in check. I, I really can't see that happening at all. Now, does that mean Tommy will win? Probably not. Well, I mean, it, he can win, but it's not a guaranteed ticket if you're confident on the night you're going to win. However, it certainly is another failure point that he's kind of covered over. We don't, I don't think personally that he's going to fail to that, because if that were to happen, I think we would have had to have seen very different reaction uh, to Jake Paul from Tommy Fury and generally the Fury family, which is now getting involved in this. And I also do think this is exposing a key weakness in Jake Paul's game. Jake Paul very much relies on the Conor McGregor strategy of trying to get in his opponent's head. Be very out there, be very potent in the room, you know, like Conor McGregor taking Aldo's belt and waving up in the air, which clearly got Aldo infuriated. That is what Jake Paul is trying to do. Now, obviously, he's not to the same level as McGregor. McGregor took it to a completely different height, you know, uh, back four or five years ago. But Jake Paul is doing an element of that, sort of an offspring of it. And yeah, it's really, it really has worked a couple times in the past, but not necessarily to the same degree now. And I think the main reason is people found a way around it. Tyron Woodley found a way around it in that face-to-face -face interview where basically, you know, it was Jake Paul sat there, uh, Tyron Woodley sat there, and Ariel Hawani in my position. And but basically, Tyron Woodley ran over the guy. You know, Ty Tyron Woodley was completely bossing it. He had Jake Paul saying, oh, he's going to lose. Why, why, why are you dressed like some gangster? Are you some gangster? You know, whatever. And then Tyron Woodley was coming back with some crazy, very, very funny insults. Careers by far. Ask Amanda Serrano. Ask Charles Conwell. Ask Tyron Woodley. Ask you know, these nuts. Or, you got West Side on your shirt. You, you at home? You, you know? I still want to hear let freestyle. Throw, let me see you throw the West Side up. I see, still, I still want to hear a freestyle. Let me see your shirt throw the West Side up. Can we go? I don't have to be tough. Oh, wow, you're so tough. You got a gun. You I, don't got have, a knife. I don't have to be tough. What are you going to do? I don't have to be tough and cancer. Well, you try to be. I got people to do that for me. And basically, the strategy there to combating Jake Paul's, uh, I guess, antics is to do a Jake Paul back to Jake Paul. You have to be loud as well. You have to match Jake Paul's bets and Jake Paul's silliness. You have to do what Jake Paul does to you back to him, and he can't say a word because Jake Paul relies on being the dominant figure in press conferences. Jake Paul relies on walking all over his opponents. And if Jake Paul cannot back that up, then Jake Paul cannot do anything. Because if Jake Paul can't argue with you, because you're, you know, you're, you're insulting him like to Tommy Fury was in that press conference, he sat, he sits there like a schoolchild. That, that's, that's all. That, so people have found a way out of it now. You know, Jake Paul's like uh, demeanor of being very dominant, being, being very uh, in your face, being saying insults about your mother and everything like he did to Tyrone Woodley. That doesn't work anymore once people have found a way around it, and people have most certainly found a way around it. So I think Tommy Fury is not going to completely be frightened uh, into performing badly on the night like KSI says. 
I don't think that's a guaranteed win for him, of course. I still think it's a very, very 50-50 fight from this far out. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I do think, personally, in this instance, KSI is completely wrong. Uh, I don't like saying that. I'm a KSI fan, but, you know, I have to be objective. And I, I, I do, and a lot of other people think this is completely false. Tommy, if, we, if that was going to happen to Tommy, I think we would have seen a very different reaction. And I don't think we would have seen him be the way he was at that press conference. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe. I will see you in the next one. In fact, I have a quick, uh, I have a quick announcement uh, to make. I have a new channel. It, that's that's not going to take away anything from this channel. I just have a new channel. It's called Christian's Dumpster Channel. Uh, and basically, the way it works is like this. I I would like to take some clips from my videos, like funny clips and stuff. But basically, I don't have enough time in the day to do that. So this is where you guys come in. This is an opportunity for you to be featured in one of my videos. If you take a clip, like a funny clip off my videos, it doesn't have to be long, 10, 20 seconds, whatever. You take that and you upload it to YouTube and you put that link to, in the comments section below. I will click on that link, download it off of YouTube and repost it and give you credit in the description. I'll give you credit for taking the clip uh, on the Christian Dumpster channel. So if you want if you want to be in one of my videos, take a funny clip, like what, like a funny moment you see in one of my videos, uh, upload it to YouTube, put it in my comments section. I would upload it, repost it. And you'll get credit in the description. That's how it works. Anyway, if you want that, yeah, it's linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe and I will see you in the next one.